Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm about halfway through making a portrait of my stepmother's Shih Tzu. This is Peppy. She's a Shih Tzu that was adopted by my dad and his wife a few years ago from the Humane Society. And in this portrait, she's going to be wearing a winter outfit that was worn by Lady Edith in the Downton Abbey TV show. She's almost all fur, so she won't look anything like this when it's done. This fellow here, um, my my face sculpting form got his head and shoulders last week and that's what you see here. I just printed the pattern at 60% so it's about 9 inches high. She is actually a little bit bigger. I think uh, the real Peppy's face is only about that big. So if I wanted this to be life size I would probably print it maybe 40% or 50%. I haven't actually done the math to see exactly how tall that would be but I think it would probably come a little bit closer. But with my eyeballs, I kind of need it to be this big anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to go with this. You can print the pattern at any size you want to. And if you, obviously you wouldn't have to have the pattern at all if you want to go ahead and sculpt all this stuff yourself. I, I really did think it was going to be a real challenge <laughs> to actually use the skull portion inside of here. I thought I was probably going to just chop it all up and end up not using it at all. But it turns out that it was actually a lot closer. A, a short-faced dog and a human's skull is not as different as I had actually thought it was. It was really surprising. So that part was actually fairly easy. Just to, just used a box cutter and some tape. <laughs> the nose and the eyes and the mouth were made with some magic sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy clay. If you wanted to use the air dry clay recipe on my website, you could certainly do that. I also covered it with uh, she's not all done, but I have uh, covered it at least part way with paper mache clay. And the recipe for that is out on my website, or you could use paper strips and paste. That would work too. Now, for those crazy eyebrows and the mustache and all that fur that is on Peppy, I'm going to use the crochet string just like I did when I was making the mane for the horse. I figured if it worked for him, it ought to work for her. Hopefully, this time I won't make quite as big a mess, but I probably will. Now let me go ahead and show you how this was done to this point and then in the next video we'll go ahead and put some clothes on her and some fur and get her all done. I found a, a website that told me what the Shih Tzu is supposed to look like according to the, you know, the rules of showing dogs. And they had a couple of drawings of Shih Tzus with no hair on them, no fur. So this is basically what they look like. Um, the stop comes right here. Um, our stop actually starts up here above the above the eyeballs. So that's this whole area here with the nose, that's gonna have to go. The face is round rather than up and down. And they don't have a chin. Dogs don't have chins, but we do. So the muzzle is going to go over here. Her eyes, which are very wide apart, are going to go out here where the cheekbones are of this human-like um, skull. All this is going to come out, so I'm going to get out my box cutter. She now has, actually, it's really close. It's really, really close. This is interesting. It's by squishing it a little bit. So, um, we need to get just a little bit more foil right there. 
for some reason I keep thinking I've got my video turned on and then I, it turns out I don't. So I'm a little bit ahead of you here. Um, I found some little balls of styrofoam. I think they're what, three quarters of an inch or something. Really little. I cut one of them in half. The eyes are really wide spaced. Um, about the same distance apart as the muzzle is wide, really. I added just a little bit of foil just to kind of straighten out the muzzle. Didn't need very much. And then I've just put a little bit of foil on the sides for those rounded portions of the muzzle. And this is her lower jaw, which sticks out a little bit. Not quite that much, but I'll... I'll um, fix that as we go. Her nose is going to come out probably a little farther than is officially allowed by the, the people who are in charge of judging dogs. Peppy isn't a show dog, so we're not going to worry about it. Kind of takes care of the problem of the chin. <laughs> and I, I do need some right here to fill that out because she's got a round face, not a, not a squished in face. It's it it is actually working. I, I'm I'm really surprised. I, it, <laughs> I shouldn't be. I'm I'm supposed to um, act like I knew what I was doing, but I mean honestly, I didn't. <laughs> it's just a, a, a strange thing to do, but I think it actually is going to work. But I'm going to go um, sit down and just use the pen and smooth off everything. Now I've got her kind of squished down and everything's kind of a little bit more solid. So I can look now and see where it isn't uh, even, where it's not quite square. I kind of drew a line here so I could see where the middle was, make sure that I get the nose in the middle this time. And there's going to be a little bit more um, small pieces of foil that have to get put on there, just little pieces this time. So I got my magic sculpt, two parts epoxy clay. I got my little guy. I decided that she's as done as she's going to get for the foil. I got gloves on, and I'm going to get ready to mix this up. I've got a little ball of the hardener and the resin. They're both about the same size, I think. I'm just going to keep mixing them up over and over and over again. Just got, got my fingers wet, squishing it together.
So now the epoxy is cured, it's nice and hard, and I've added a little bit of foil just to round things out just a little bit better. And I'm playing around with some ears, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but um, while the furnace was still on, <laughs> making too much noise, I decided to play with it. That's going to take a while. Um, we have to get them to the, the right size and the right, right shape and all that sort of thing, but we're not quite ready for that. Uh, what I want to do now is to raise her up just a little bit because I, her face is so wide it just doesn't feel like it is um, balanced correctly. I, I don't know if that's the right word for it or not but proportions aren't quite right. So I'm going to very very carefully cut this off and I'm being careful because there's a plastic bag full of sand in there and I would rather not have sand all over the floor. Coming loose, yeah. There we go. Now I'm just going to make the go straight down on all sides because she's going to have clothes on and her her coat is going to come down and add some shaping to it. So I'm just going to go straight down. I'm also going to have to move her head backwards just a little bit because the the jawline should come a little bit farther back on the neck so I'm going to have to do some surgery there too I'm going to put it I'll probably have to cut the neck portion so that her her um, jaw the back of her jaw can actually fit along um, inside of the neck and then the back will stick out but that's okay because the hat would do that too so that'll work out just fine and that'll that'll help balance her too so now There. That's much better. Now if this was her real skull, it would have stopped right there, but this is going to be her hat, so it's okay. In case you're wondering, all this, all this uh, up here <laughs> at the top of this ear that I'm making, that's so that I have a lot of space to put some uh, hot glue so that it'll be very, very firmly attached to her head. Because I'm going to be actually moving it around a bit when I'm adding the paper and say clay.
I took a photograph of her, um, drew the hat that Lady Edith is wearing in the particular photograph that I'm, I'm borrowing for this project. And so the hat itself goes out. It isn't like tight against the, the head. It actually comes out around the edges. Not like that, <laughs> but I think you can kind of get the feel for it. So if I do it this way and if I just press in this ear a bit, okay, I think then what it's trying to tell me is that I can put the paper mache basically on everything as long as the ears are down low enough so that it would look like her hair, um, the way Lady Edith's hair did when they it was curling around underneath that hat. I just can't keep it out really far or can't get a real heavy bend in it because that wouldn't work. But as long as it's down here, I think it's going to go. So I'll go ahead and make my paper mache clay now and we'll get started. I got dog hair on there, which seems appropriate. <laughs> Now I've mixed up some paper mache clay. It looks a little bit different from usual. It's a little bit darker because I'm doing an experiment. Um, I'll tell you about that later. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all for this project, so we'll, we'll ignore that. It's just uh, it's not white like it usually is. And I'm going to lift up these ears so I can get in underneath. I want it to be hard. I, you know, obviously you're not going to want foil sticking out anywhere, even even in hidden places. But I'm going to have to be really careful to um, to not r rip the ears right off. I mean, they're on pretty good because I, you know, used a lot of hot glue, but still. I made the clay just a little bit thicker than I usually do this time just because I knew I was going to have to um, fix some of the sculpting errors. Basically, there, there were some places where the, the foil um, just wasn't as even as I wanted it to be, like right above the eye here. You know, there shouldn't be a dip, <laughs> and there was. So I am filling it in a bit, and that means that the paper mache clay is going to take longer to dry. I'm going to have to be really careful to make sure that it dries though as quickly as possible, so I will put it in front of the, the furnace vent. Okay, so now I'm going to put this down very carefully. <laughs> I'm going to put her in front of the heating vent, close the door to the studio so the cat can't knock her over. <laughs> and then in the next video, we get to see how it turns out. Uh, I get that fur put on there. Hopefully we can do the fur and the hat and the coat and all the ruffles and stuff in one video, but I'm, I'm not sure that's going to work, but we're going to try really hard. And then after Peppy is all done, the next not quite human project is Pan. So I'm really looking forward to that too. Uh, sculpting a man's face with a goat's ears and, and horns sounds really fun. But Peppy's got to get done first. So watch for that uh, video. And in the meantime, go make something. And then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.